What's going on YouTube? It's your boy JL Musi. I'm very excited because I'm bringing you a brand new series that's documenting the creation of my 3D printed Scorpion body art. Now, after a lot of hard work, I finally finished the right shoulder piece. This is the right shoulder piece right here, and well, it goes on my right shoulder. Hard to guess, right? So, as you see, kind of fits like this. I do have the left piece printed, it just has to be glued and then post processed. I decided to break down the production of the shoulder armor into two videos. The first that shows the modeling side of the final production files, and then the second that shows the printing and the post processing of the piece. While this first video is not meant to be a full blown modeling tutorial, I try my best to highlight the key points within the modeling pipeline. For this project, I mainly use ZBrush as well as a little bit of Maya for cleanup. I will show you all the brushes that I use within ZBrush and try to highlight all the commands that I use within Maya. I'm very excited to show you the modeling that went behind the finished file of the Scorpion shoulder piece. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. This is the first design that I attempted. Uh, it was created over scan data and I found that it was a little bit too busy. Uh, while it did have kind of some cool uh, aesthetic elements to it, I found that it didn't really match the mask that I already created. So I ended up sticking with something a little closer to the original video game reference. So what I did is I started uh, by smoothing out all the details off that first design and I had a lower subdivision with ZBrush uh, with the smooth brush. I stripped out most of the detail and then I started to rebuild it again. I brought the rough sculpt back into Maya where I performed a process called retopology to create a clean base shape for me to do the high poly sculpt from. So what I'm doing here now is just what I call the vertice dance where I uh, grab verts and I really perfect this base shape by pushing and pulling. Uh, from here I'm just taking some edges and performing a simple edge extrude where I can go ahead and start fleshing out the tip of the armor. Now this armor towards the uh, center has this sharp edge so with the soft select tool I'm grabbing edges and then pulling up to create that peak. So I'm selecting all the parallel edges and doing a edge bevel. Uh, a lot of times I'll do an edge bevel uh, not to round a shape but to actually just uh, give me some width along selected edges. Uh, from here I'll start selecting uh, the second row of edges and pulling up to create the uh, scales that this uh, shoulder armor has. So I selected all the verts along the uh, symmetry border and then I'll scale towards one axis to make it flat and then within the mirroring options I will enable the uh, instance option which is great because it keeps a live connection between my current mesh and then the proxy mesh that is being mirrored. With a, a simple cylinder I start to flesh out the uh, sharp tip that this shoulder armor has. And one thing that you might see here is that I use the slide option a lot and uh, that's a really great way of sliding components around a already established shape. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the spike and kind of this uh, support piece and I'm running a Boolean's union operation. What that's going to do is uh, merge both meshes. And that's going to allow me to clean up the uh, edge flow here and give it a nice radial uh, edge flow to it. So with a simple cube, I'm blocking out the uh, spike here that it kind of has running parallel to its side of the shoulder armor 
And I'm keeping this pretty uh, low poly. Uh, most of the shape will be defined within ZBrush once I subdivide the mesh. But I will try to block out the base form along with the uh, smaller spike that is extruding from the tip. From here, I basically will uh, finalize all the shape, add holding edges as needed, select all my uh, components here, and then mirror them over. And I'm ready to send this bad boy over to ZBrush. So here in ZBrush, I'm just gonna subdivide my shapes, and then I'll use a combination of the trim dynamic along with the pinch to add some sharpness and character to the edges of the shape. So I'm working here on these spikes that run parallel uh, to the main shape of the shoulder armor. And what I'm doing here with symmetry enabled, I'm just taking my move brush and just kind of fleshing out the base shape. And then uh, I continue subdividing the mesh and I really like to use the clay buildup brush to uh, flesh out some of the larger volumes. I just continue to use a combination of the move brush along with the clay buildup to get closer to the final shape that I'm looking for. I'm using a combination now of the uh, trim dynamic along with the H polish to just add some uh, sharper edges and some flat areas to really make it look like some steel armor. So in my opinion, this is one of the uh, funner parts of the uh, sculpting process is I get to add some texture. So I'm using some uh, pre-made alpha packs here and I'm starting to add some cracks to the scale. Um, you see that I'm actually masking out the outer edge here that I don't want any of the uh, cracks applied to. I'm using the layers feature within ZBrush, which makes it really a uh, flexible workflow, especially when 3D printing. A lot of times you might design something for print, print it, and it might look okay, then you uh, start sanding, filling, priming, and by the time you have a finished piece, you figure out that those details actually need to be pushed more in the sculpt. Uh, and that gives you the flexibility of just going back to those layers and pushing the detail further. I'm going around uh, my sculpt here and adding some additional battle damage in the form of these slashes. And that's going to give it just that nice uh, battle worn look that I'm looking for. One of the key things here to keep in mind is not to overdo it. You definitely want to find that sense of balance. Now that the sculpt is finalized, I start thinking about the uh, technical side of things as far as how this is going to be printed. So uh, with some primitives within ZBrush, I create the registration keys, which are basically just small cylinders that I take and then duplicate and start placing where these pieces will meet uh, and be glued together. I also will take a cube and then just squish it down and that's going to act as a slicing plane uh, that I will use to make some of my cuts. Once I create all my registration keys, uh, I basically combine them all into one subtool and then I will run the booleans operation within ZBrush and it'll actually make those uh, holes where then I can fit uh, a 3D printed pin and I'll be able to glue the pieces together and they will fit pretty much perfectly. So here you see me playing around with this longer cylinder. Uh, this will actually act as a uh, support where uh, I'll be able to wrap around a strap of some sort and that way uh, this piece will be able to attach to the rest of my costume. 
I uh, like to decimate my pieces uh, before sending them over to Maya. And uh, pretty much what decimation is, is just a process that uh, ZBrush has where you can dramatically reduce the poly count of a mesh while preserving most of the details. And this makes it uh, a lot easier for other 3D applications to be able to handle those files. I like to export my STL files from Maya over to IdeaMaker. Uh, Maya has some good uh, overall scene management tools and also some good transformation tools that really help me uh, set things flat along the bed. So for example, uh, these spikes right here, I want them to be perfectly flat on a surface. So what I do here is I use the very handy uh, transform tool that Maya has called Snap Together Tool. I essentially start out by creating a cube. Could actually be any primitive with a flat surface. And what I'll do is I'll take the bottom of the uh, spike here that needs to lay flat on the printing bed and then I snap it together to that cube. Now, technically I could do this in Idea Maker, but it probably won't be precise. And I'll have to finagle a lot with the rotate tool and even then it won't be exact. So this ensures that I have a perfect orientation flat along the printing bed of my printer. I go back and repeat this process for every piece that needs to lay flat on the printing bed. What I'll, what I'll also do is I'll take one pin and since the holes are pretty much the same, I just need to shrink one down uh, for it to have a little bit of breathing room so once printed, uh, it'll actually fit without additional sanding. So as you see, I've oriented most of the pieces laying down flat and uh, they're pretty much ready to take over to Idea Maker to continue the printing process. I'm so glad that you could join me in this video and allow me to share my workflow of this finished armor piece. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where I take these files, I set them up for printing Idea Maker. I will show you some time lapse footage of the final pieces, as well as all the post production work on the piece, including sanding, gluing, priming. I hope that you enjoyed the recording. Don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure to subscribe to my channel and smash that notifications button to be informed as soon as I release my next video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.